we have uh, strikes all across the country coming up. We've got tons of strikes that we've seen. Some are getting more attention than others. Usually, um, that's that's how it goes. Uh, but there are strikes happening nationwide. Uh, es- people that are being considered essential workers are going to uh, to battle against this corporate oligarchy uh, to fight for the rights of the average working class American. And if you are uh, if you are, are for the people, if you believe in, in, in freedom for the people, then you should be on the side of these strikers. You should be supporting general strikes. You should, you should, um, you, you should be behind these people for what they are trying to do. Uh, because what they're trying to do is essentially make your lives better um, by, by showing exactly how essential they really are. Right. And that's really what they're doing. They're showing exactly how essential um, these jobs are and how much this system, how much um, we depend on people to do these jobs and why we should treat them better to do these jobs. Why we should we we shouldn't just we shouldn't just pay them pittance um, or 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 not show them any respect or treat them terribly, uh, you know, in, in the midst of them doing this job. So the first one I will start with is um, my city, Pittsburgh, which is where I'm uh, based and located, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, they had a sanitation strike last week. Um, the reports that I've read, I'm not sure what the result of this sanitation strike is. And we might not know for a little bit um, if I find out something today or tomorrow, I will probably talk about it in in tomorrow's videos. But um, yeah, Pittsburgh went on a sanitation strike. Basically, what they were doing is uh, they were requesting gloves, they were requesting masks and hazard pay. We're in a hazard time. This is a pandemic. And picking up garbage is an essential function. Like you need sanitation to run a city. You, You know, like that's what you need. Um, we don't have pneumatic tubes that uh, that we can all throw our stuff into that take it to a centralized location for, you know, uh, to be split up um, and, and, you know, put into wherever we decide to put into. Um, you know, so uh, we need we need our garbage men. We need our garbage women. We need our gar- we need our sanitation people. They are essential to uh, to to keeping this keeping a city running. Um, and what they're requesting, gloves, masks, and hazard pay, is not really over the top. Here's the thing with these strikes too: is like they're not asking for something that's like crazy or over the top, right? It's not like we shall not work until we get suits of armor made out of platinum like they're not asking for something crazy <laughs> you know like they're not like give us robert downey jr suit from iron man 2 when he fights whiplash for the first time that is the only thing that we shall be picking up the garbage from like they're not doing any of that <laughs> Gloves, masks, and hazard pay—pretty reasonable, reasonable things to uh, to ask for here. Um, and like I said, they're considered essential, but they're but they're paid like they're not. You know, uh, out of um, out of all of the municipal jobs that uh, are out there, uh, sanitation workers make the the least. They pay get, they get paid less than fifteen dollars an hour, uh, and there are teamsters that have apparently partnered with the city so that they don't have to get raises in conjunction with inflation and price increases and and cost of living increases. You know, and that's not, that's not right. That's not right for essential workers. If they're truly essential, then treat them like they're truly essential. You know, give them give them the hazard pay, give them gloves, give them masks, treat them properly. So. And this is what they're saying, right? They're, they're not saying that they don't want to do the job. They're not like we're sick and tired of picking up after your your trash and your 
you know, your your half eaten hot pockets and, and your 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 old jizzy towels. No one cares for doing that job. And we shall not do it ever again until we get Tony Stark's armor from the cinema Iron Man three now. Like that's not they're not saying they're not gonna do the job. They just wanna be safe while doing it, which again is a reasonable request. This is not that big of a deal. This is this. They're making it seem like it's this over the top request to be safe while they do their already kind of unsafe job. Like it's not a super safe job. Being 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 a, a, a sanitation worker is not a super safe job. They're on the backs of trucks. They're dealing with they're, they're dealing with with waste materials. You know, like you should be taking the proper precautions, especially in the time of global pandemic when you have a virus that can, you know, that's that stays on cardboard, that stays on plastic and metal for several days, you know, like that's, it's all stuff that, that you have to take into account. And Bill Peduto, um, so he rejected the masks and claims it's dangerous. This guy's a Democrat, by the way. So for all the people that are like, oh, the Democrats are, are better than the Republicans, Democrat right here, denying workers what they need to be safe doing their jobs. Uh, and he said that he, the, the masks are, are dangerous, so we can't give you the masks, right? Here's, um, here's where the danger, uh, lies. Um, it, uh, it lies in the lack of testing during a pandemic, which we don't have. We don't have, uh, testing, or if there is testing, it costs too much money for a lot of people to afford, even if they have health insurance, uh, it lies in the workers picking up somebody else's trash. And if that person is sick, uh, and they throw away Kleenexes or something that they touched or whatever, then the sanitation worker gets infected and they can possibly infect their family. Uh, and now this is spreading even further. So now by not taking proper precautions that these sanitation workers are asking for pretty reasonably, uh, you have now become the danger. So really... Bill Peduto is a danger. Peduto is the danger one, dangerous one, not the sanitation workers. The second strike that we're going to talk about is the Instacart strikes. Um, now, I did some stuff for Instacart um, as as like side money, is and it became like and it's essentially that's what it became. It's like pocket change. Um, it's I because I can't. My personality is not suited for me to go and be a shopper for like eight straight hours. I think I did it for like four hours maximum, um, like a couple days a week last year over the summer. And I tried to do it again over the over the holidays. Um, and, you know, you, you make a little bit of money throughout the week uh, during those times. Um, but... Really, my my concern ended up being uh, I am. Uh, what's the cost of the gas? What is the cost of my time? And what is the cost of um, the mechanical stuff that I'm going to have to fix in my car? Right. Repairs and maintenance and stuff. So uh, these guys are also considered essential workers right now. Um, Instacart, the way it works, it's not, I, I didn't make it like, like I said, I made like pocket change is essentially what I made. Like, I was like, cool, I can buy a beer. Like, I don't have to worry about buying beer. Like, that's kind of the money that I, uh, that, that, you know, it's like, it's, it's a little, it's a little pocket cash. Um, they have a base pay. It's not very, it's not very great. And then they, they give you a certain percentage of the mileage that you drive, but it's only the mileage that you drive from the store to the customer's house. Um, it's not the mileage that you would drive from the customer's house to this next delivery, right? And sometimes, like, one of the things I found out and really ticked me off, and I called them about it, and I told them about it, and they were just like, yep, nothing you can really do about it. So you can just go and uh, eat a bag of dicks. No one really cares. Um like literally they were just like yeah that's what our policy is and that's what it is and we're not going to change it so okay if you don't want to drive you don't want to drive for it whatever no it's no it's no skin off our back right and uh, basically um 
let's say you get you get a uh, you get a uh, a a request at, at an Aldi that's about a mile from where you are. So from where you are to the Aldi, you don't get you don't get paid. You go in, do your shopping, and then from the Aldi to the customer's house, which is another, which is like two miles, right? Uh, you get you get your you get point six. Uh, 60 cents per mile reimbursed to you. So you get, to, you know, so it's basically you made a dollar twenty off of that. And then let's say from that customer's house to the next thing is like eight miles. You get, you don't get reimbursed for that at all. You don't get reimbursed for that at all. Right. Um, and that's not, and, and the way that they, they phrase it is you, they basically you get 60 cents per mile that you drive is sort of the way that they pitch it. Um, which is super not true and uh, you get a base pay and then it's like a percentage or something like it's at the end of the day, unless you're, unless you're constantly picking up orders um, that are like, you know, over a hundred bucks or something like that, you're not really, I mean, it's, you're not making a lot of money and these guys are considered essential. So the company basically said the Inst Instacart said that it would increase safety measures and procure hand, hand sanitizer and this is what three weeks into the pandemic that they said that they would do this. They, this has happened on Sundays when they said that. That's three weeks into a fucking pandemic, and you decided to say that you were going to, uh, you were going to, oh, we'll, 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 we'll help the employees now, right? These essential people, we'll, we'll help them now that they're saying that they're not going to do it. Then now, now we think we'll help them. Um, so the workers are pissed. They're like, it took you guys three fucking weeks. We've been asking for this for so long. We've been asking for this for so long to get hand sanitizer and help us out with gloves and just safety equipment. And you guys fucking wouldn't do it. You guys treated, you know, so it's the same thing as the, as the Pittsburgh sanitation workers. They asked for the same thing. Um, and then they said the, the company, Instacart, said that they would adjust the app uh, so that they receive more consistent tips. How? That's not up to you. That's up to the customer. Like the tips are up to the customer to give you. And usually like most of the orders that I remember getting were anywhere between like eight and 15 bucks. And I would get like a dollar or two in tips. Right. So like if I did four or five, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go five. I think I the most the most amount I did was like four. Um, if I get four orders in, in a shift, in a four hour shift, um, you know, I mean, I'm getting what, five or six bucks in tips. That's not a lot. So what are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to force people? Are you going to add mandatory tips to, to customers orders when like these are customers that are probably staying at home because they need to stay at home. They're probably not receiving paid time off after a certain amount of time. And if they are, they're working from home and they might not be making enough money. So during a time of pandemic, you're not going to take care of your workers and you're also going to force your customers to pay more in tips because you don't want to increase the base pay of your, of your fucking employees that you deem are essential or people that you need to do this job. Right, what they should do, like I said, receive better base pay, cover their bills, and cover and offer benefits. I mean, most of these jobs don't don't have any benefits attached to them at all. Um, Lyft, I know, I think Lyft offers some kind of a health care. I don't believe Uber does. Um, DoorDash doesn't, or DoorDash does after a while. But I can't imagine that it's particularly very good. Um, you know, I can't imagine that it's particularly like, like I feel like it's one of those health cares where you have it and you, and you don't have to like be penalized for it. But if you go to a hospital for something, like you just won't, like you just won't, <laughs> you, you don't really get that much coverage. You know, like you're still going to have to pay quite a bit out of pocket. Uh, so what's the point of having health insurance if that's what you're going to do anyway? So Instacart's on strike. Uh, we got Whole Foods. They're doing a sick out. I believe a sick out is happening today. Um, 
the day that you're watching this video, most likely, and if you're watching this video later, uh, well, I'll say this, the day that I'm recording this video, uh, is Tuesday, March 31st. Um, and so they have a list of demands. Uh, let's pull up the list of demands. This is their list of demands here. And again, pretty fucking reasonable in my opinion. Uh, guaranteed paid leave for all workers who isolate or self-quarantine instead of coming to work. So if they feel like they need to do that, uh, they should get paid leave. Uh, reinstate health care coverage for part-time and seasonal workers. Yeah, I mean, everybody that's part-time and seasonal should have health coverage uh, offered by the company. You're, you're not paying them. You're, you're paying them virtually nothing, but you're still like, so why would anybody want to be a part-time or seasonal worker if they get paid less, they don't have a guarantee of actually having a job, uh, and they get less hours, and they don't get any health coverage or anything? So it's like, yeah, let's just keep doing this antithetical thing where, we, where it's like, oh, you're poor? Let's figure out ways to make you even more poor. Uh, increase FSA funds to cover coronavirus testing and treatment for all team members, including part-time and seasonal. I don't know what FSA funds are. If you do leave a comment, because I'm not sure what that is, but if it's something to cover testing, then yes. Uh, guaranteed hazard pay in the form of double pay during scheduled hours. Yeah, you should definitely do that. This is, this is like unsafe times, right? Like people are, people are freaking out. You know, like we're in a global pandemic. Uh, implement implementation of new policies that can facilitate social distancing between workers and customers. Sure. Uh, again, r relatively reasonable. I went into a Rite Aid the other day and they have tape like marked off six feet uh, from each other. It, it was very strange. But sure, if that's what you feel like you need to do. Uh, commitment to ensuring that all locations have adequate sanitation equipment uh, and procedures in place. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that they did say they were doing. It's like, oh, we have deep clean practices in place. And it's like, yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, but maybe you should, like, if you close your store at 7, maybe you should have, like, a team of people, like professional cleaners, come in and sanitize the fucking store top to bottom um, you know, after you close early so that the next day, like, it's, you know, ready to go. Immediate shutdown of any location where a worker tests positive for COVID-19. In such an event, all workers should continue to receive full pay, pay unit. Uh, the store can safely reopen. So, yeah, so that's also seems super fucking fair to me is um, why wouldn't you? Why would why would why would you? Have somebody that tests positive of a highly commutable disease. You're freaking out that this thing is going to spread and kill everybody. That's what the media keeps saying. Oh, my God, it's going to spread. There's going to be 80,000 cases. There's going to be 150,000 cases. There's 77 million cases. Like, that's all they keep doing is they keep freaking out about how many cases there are and how it's going to kill everybody. And... Yet, you see corporations very nonchalantly being like, yeah, there was a guy that tested positive. We just, uh, we kind of shoved him uh, into, into one of our freezers in the back room. And we, and we put this, we put caution tape around it. And he just, it, that, and that guy lives there now. Um, and and that's, a, that's how we at Whole Foods are taking care of this. Because we think of people first. Uh, it's like, what? It's a highly commutable disease, assholes. Like, if he, if that person touched a bunch of other people, then, they, like, you need to provide, now you have to provide testing for all of the people that regularly come and shop at that area. If you shop at that store and all of the employees, and you have to desanitize the entire fucking store. I mean, so what does that mean? That probably means that you might have to lose some stuff, right? Like, you, like, some of the perishables might be gone. You might have to restock it. Well, oh, fucking well, I guess. Like, what, I mean, what are you going to do? Again, it's like if you think about people first, then that's what you have to do. You have to you have to eat some of your own fucking profits. And it's not even I mean, like at the end of the day, with how little you uh, these people get paid, um, how they're not taken care of, like part time and seasonal. Like that's a way to loophole to ensure that you don't have to pay people's health care. You don't have to cover any benefits for them. You don't have to take care of anything for them. So you just hire a bunch of people and you're like, oh, you're all part time. We have 
400 employees that are all part-time in one fucking store. Everybody works four-hour shifts. That's all they do. And we don't have to cover fucking dick all. And we don't have to give them raises. We don't have to give them cost of living. And we don't have to schedule them more than 15 hours in a week. And everything is fine. We're making shit tons of money, right? Like, I'm pretty sure you can you can reduce your bottom line a little bit and still be fine. I'm pretty sure you can still afford to shop at a Whole Foods when none of your other employees can. Here's the crazy part about all this, right? There was somebody that gets tested positive at a Whole Foods. Whole Foods does not shut down. They keep going. In certain cities, if we go out past a certain time, right? Like a curfew has been enacted in certain cities um, or a stay-at-home order has been enacted uh, in certain cities. So like you can only do essential things like grocery stores, pharmacies, um, exercise, that sort of stuff. Um, But I think mental health might be one of the things. If you go out, you get fined. And most of us can't afford any of these fines, right? Like we go out And they're like, oh, you're willingly spreading this disease, so we're going to go ahead and fine you. Um, Whole Foods is part of a system that is ensuring the rate of spread and gets away scot-free. Like, we know there are people that get, that test positive, and they're like, okay, put them in the icebox. Everybody just go back and pretend like business is normal. Because Papa's, Papa's got a new helicopter to buy. Because they don't care about people. They care about markets and stock prices over people. That's what they care about. That's what's important to them. Greed is a deadlier virus than COVID-19. Always has been and always will be. Amazon warehouses. This is the other big one, right? This is a double hit for Bezos. It's kind of (laughs) great. We're just kind of speed bag punching Bezos' balls with these strikes. I'm, I'm into it. I'm fine with it, you know? Let's get a couple more people speed bagging those testes, you know? Let's make sure, let's make sure if, if there's any possibility uh, that there is an evil gene inside Jeff Bezos and there is a greed gene inside Jeff Bezos that he can't, he can't spread that shit around, you know? Let's, let's, let's make sure that he uses a portion of his... Enormous wealth to have to buy uh, prosthetic balls. Is that too mean? Is that too mean? I kind of think that's a very funny image in my head. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's a fucking sociopath uh, that doesn't have human emotions inside of him. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) But that thought to me is kind of very funny. Uh, Anyway, whatever. Let Let us move on. Uh, 50 to 200 people walked out of a Staten Island warehouse after there was a positive case of COVID-19 and they didn't shut the warehouse down. They didn't shut the warehouse down. Um, so they staged a walkout. So they just fucking walked out. Uh, what they're, again, this, these are all fucking reasonable claims to me. I just, I like anybody that's against this stuff. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Please, if you are against these strikes in somehow, like, if you have a reason, please explain it to me because I don't understand why somebody would be against something like this. Why somebody would be against, like, such reasonable requests that people are making. Uh, and, and why you would be on the side of a corporation that's like, but what about our market shares? You can shove your market shares up your ass is what you can do. Uh, They asked for the building to be closed, sanitized, and the workers to get paid during that time. Fair, right? Um, And if you are one of those people that are like, oh, we're just supposed to, we're just supposed to pay you while you, while you're at home, sitting on your ass, huh? What about my packages, huh? I ordered, I ordered some quality fucking headphones, and I ordered uh, a Blu-ray edition of Dodgeball, and you're not even going to give that to me? What, what about that? And, you're, and we're just supposed to pay you while you sit on your ass? Why do the workers need to be penalized for a natural pandemic? Why, whenever there's some kind of a natural disaster or something, the worker has to, has to, has to pay the price of it? It's 
especially when, when these working class people are not treated very well and paid so little. Why are they the ones that are getting the penalty? Four trillion dollars in, in corporate slush funds. We saw that last week. Four trillion dollars. It's trillion with a T, folks. That is trillion with a fucking T. Uh, it hasn't helped. It hasn't helped anybody except corporations, right? And the idea behind giving corporations a four trillion dollar corporate slush fund to bail them out is that corporations will get a huge bailout and then allocate it, um, allocate that wealth to the rest of the company. This has never fucking worked. This has never fucking worked. In the history of trickle-down economics, it's never fucking worked. When somebody came up with trickle-down economics, just even, even in the conception of the idea, it failed. Like, that's how, that's how terrible this idea is. What they do is they'll take that corporate bailout, they'll take that money, and they'll hide it in their tax havens and their bonds and their mutual funds and their stock and all this complicated fake bullshittery that is the, 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 the American economic system, the markets, the, the Wall Streets and the, the stock exchange. and the, the, like These are all just fake weird things where it's just like, well, we'll move the money over here into this fund and make it into this corporate thing and we'll pull it all together over here and somebody somehow will make some money and it's like, blah, 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 blah. what? That's that's what that's what it is. That's how it works. Right now, even without any of that corporate bailout shit, they had enough money to take care of all of the basic human needs that we have. Why would the employee and the worker want to work for a company that doesn't take care of its workers? Why would you go to Amazon if they're not taking care of you? Why would you stick with Instacart if they're not taking care of you? Why would you stick with, with Whole Foods? Why would you work for a city that, that doesn't take care of you? So especially with that, with, on that level too, is like if you see city workers, if you see like municipal workers all s saying, hey, our, the city is not taking care of, yeah, every citizen of that city should be behind them. Every citizen of that city should say, yes, fucking we're with you. Those sanitation workers deserve better. The Instacart workers deserve better. Amazon, Whole Foods, everybody deserves way fucking better. And what they're asking for is very reasonable shit. And it's stuff that we've been yelling about for the last fucking two decades. For 20 years minimum, we've all just been like, why are you not treating us like, like, why are you treating us like we're trash? We're going to see more of these people. We are going to see a lot more of these Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and share and make sure that you are subscribed to uh, get alerts whenever I'm dropping new videos. I'm putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day uh, during the the old the old pandemic situation that, that we're all that we're all in together. Uh, so make sure that you guys are, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, make sure that you guys are getting notifications, um, and, uh, and, and keep up to date with all this stuff. Um, uh, what else did I, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to let you guys know about. I normally would, but right now, uh, they are all on hiatus. So, um, the best way to, to help is with the with the sharing and making sure that you're subscribed and stuff but uh if you have the means to and you can donate uh you can donate over at ramen noodles comedy dot com slash donate you can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member uh whatever you are able to do but it is it is absolutely uh not 
mandatory. It is a uh, extra sense of appreciation uh, for all the content that will be coming out. All of my content will be available uh, for free for you guys to view and enjoy. Uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other. Make sure you're being good to each other. And uh, till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.